Now.com. And now it's time for more of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hookup. This portion of the show is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup. Rancho Leonero, where your wildest Baja dreams come true. Maui Gym Sunglasses, the choice of the best captains. Shimano Rods and Reels, fish with the best. Shimano. And by Yamaha Upboards, official motor sponsor of Let's Talk Hookup. Here we go. Another great hour of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hookup. Here's Pete Gray and rock god Rick Maxa. Welcome back. Hour number two. Let's talk hookup. Mighty 1090. Pete Gray here with rock god Rick Maxa. Hey, in the studio with us, Captain Ryan Boshin from San Diego. Having a great time talking fishing, yellowtail fishing, and more with Captain Ryan. No doubt, man. What a great show. Great information. A great time for you to join us. If you want to get in on the fun, talking to San Diego, talking with the guy who's down there every day, making the fishing happen, this is your opportunity. And what a great shot in the second hour. Two phone lines that will get you through to Let's Talk Hookup. Everything is packed up right now, but there's going to be a lot of opportunities here in this second hour. Our local number is 858 area code 457 1090. Again, 858 457 1090. That's the local line. Or reach us toll free. That toll free number is 877 792 1090. One more time, 877 792 1090. Not only are we talking fishing, talking to San Diego, folks giving us away two trips. Two lucky callers at the end of the show today are going to get to go fishing on board the San Diego on full day trips. We're giving away two passes at the end of the show. What a good time. Yeah, really good time indeed. And uh, look who's on the line. Mr. Mike Lum from, well, today's hat is Captain Rollo's Kids at Sea, right, Mike? Mike? It is. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Ryan. Good morning, Mike. Mike? Um, just wanted to call in and remind everybody that uh, next weekend is, uh, next Sunday is Day at the Docks. And uh, one of the most important fundraising days of the year for the Captain Rollo's program is Day at the Docks. And uh, the reason is because all year, uh, very generous folks donate fishing tackle uh, that we we store and um, wait for that one day, and it's all sold uh, at that uh, at the Rollo booth there a day at the docks. And last year was the largest uh, selection and the highest quality uh, fishing tackle, used fishing tackle that we've ever accumulated. And this year it's bigger, bigger. So, That's right. Yeah, oh there's my some God. how could it be bigger? There was stu- there was stuff everywhere last year. The, the the folks have been so generous this year, and I think what's happened is as as tackle has changed and and all the new innovations and everybody upgrading uh, to fish for these larger fish and with the newer stuff, they're being very generous and they're handing off a lot of their older stuff to the Rollo program, and uh, it's still very fishable. It's it's obviously great tackle, and uh, most importantly, every bit of it uh, gets sold. The money goes to taking more kids. Fishing. So I just want to remind everybody that if you're in the market for some backup gear or you got some friends that are just getting started or relatives, this would be a great time to, to uh, get some deals, some real deals, and know at the same time that you're helping take more kids on their first ever ocean fishing adventure. Um, and of course, in addition to that, we'll be, we'll be doing the uh, spin to win wheel and we've got a great selection of prizes that's always very popular at day at the docks. And we will also be uh, kicking off the 2018 Reel a Week program. And um, that for the last two years, that has been a very fun and a very productive uh, fundraising tool for, for the Captain Rollins program. Uh, this year, it is, again, 30, 30 weekly drawings starting, I think, on June the 5th. And that will run for 30 consecutive weeks. Uh, and then there's a bonus drawing on the 31st, kind of the grand finale. Uh, so 31 chances to win. The tickets are $25, and you're in all the drawings for that entire time until until you win a reel. Um, and, again, uh, that program has been really an important part of, of what we're doing. And uh, and so if you haven't been participating in Reel a Week, you might want to stop by the booth and be one of the first ones to get your reel a week tickets. We're only going to sell 1,500 tickets, and uh, the drawings will start the first week in June. And the last year they sold out pretty quickly, so you better get on it like a day at the docks. The average price, uh, Pete, the average price of these reels value, the average value is uh, 
$350 average. average. Uh, on, yeah, these are not low-end reels. These are all very, very high-end reels. And when you buy your ticket, you'll see a list on the front of every reel and the week that that reel will be given away. So you know ahead of time what you're going to be uh, looking forward to That's winning so that week. Yeah. So what if you can't get the day at the docks and you want to buy a reel a week ticket? Once we get the once we get it kicked off, and once we see how many tickets we've sold that day at the docks, then you'll be able to uh, to call in and uh, and and order tickets. And unfortunately, in California, we cannot sell raffle tickets via the internet. It's a state law that prohibits Stupid. us from doing that. That makes total and, sense. Yeah. yeah, it's real. It's really crazy. But the only way we can sell tickets is by phone, uh, or if you want to. Uh, mail in an order or something like that. So we do most of it by phone, and what we'll do is we'll have a phone number, and you'll call and leave a message and say, look, I want to buy, you know, five tickets or two tickets or whatever it is, and then we'll get back to you and make the arrangements to buy to buy the tickets. And we sold we sold over half of our tickets last year that way, um, and so, so uh, we'll do that again. It works. It's not as efficient as an email would be, but uh, we can't do it that way. So um, – you could, I guess you could send us an email and say, call me, um, and here's my phone number, and we can do it that way as well. We just can't do the transaction over the Internet. Gotcha. Okay. Well, but big thing is, the big push is day at the docks yeah. next Sunday, one week from today. Uh, you've got the big used tackle deal. I mean, the tackle's crazy good at bargain price, bar, ridiculous prices, uh, not it, even bargain is, prices. That is such a, a hit of a booth. I mean, People come through the tackle store all day long, a day of the docks. Hey, I just bought, you know, whatever, insert, I, I bought, bought this Cal killer Star reel. This or whatever. Yeah, this killer reel and this killer rod there, I want to put some line on it, and I only got it for, you know, whatever, 50 bucks. Like, you've got to be kidding me. You guys do such a cool job, and it's a great way to raise a bunch of money and score an awesome deal. It'd be like if you went to every swap meet that there was fishing gear at for a whole year and collected everything. Yep. It's all there in one shot at, at crazy good prices. And, as always, the most benefit is, your money's going to Friends Rolla. Yep, Captain Captain. taking kids fishing there for sure. So, Captain Rolla's Kids at Sea booth at the uh, Day at the Docks next Sunday, uh, the 15th of April. Uh, we'll that's, that's, that's located right out in front of Fisherman's Landing, by the way. If, uh, when you go to Fisherman's Landing Tackle, if you go right out in front there, that's where the Rolla booth is located. Day at the Docks is very big, so you don't have to hunt all over it. You yeah. want to get there early for the best deals on that yeah. used tackle. That's where we're at. And right next to the Let's Talk hookup booth, which we'll be doing a live broadcast, 7 to 9 a.m. next Sunday. Always a fun time. And uh, then the games begin yep. at 9 o'clock. When are you going to open the actual Rolla booth? Well, usually we're being pressed pretty hard by, by 8 o'clock, and uh, we don't physically have the ability to get things opened up before then. We start when it's still dark, and by, by you know, usually right at 8 o'clock, um, we are just ready to go. And we'll, we'll start as soon as we get ready. Yeah. And I think uh, Howard Coolidge, who handles the used tackle, I think he was actually selling used tackle before I had the – the the uh, the wheel ready to go, so uh, he'll start selling tackle as soon as he gets set up, and there's people there. So I would say probably between 7:30, that'd be safe. 7:30 is probably the right time for the used tackle, and eight for the wheel. Okay, very good, Mike Lom. Thanks for all your hard work, and we'll be uh, you'll be seeing uh, Harold Davis too. We'll be coming down yeah, to Paso Robles. Harold He's going to come down and Harold, help out. He's coming all the way down to help us uh, because that is. A very, very important day. I mean, a lot of kids uh, getting to go fishing depend on what happens that day. So, by the way, those Real Week tickets are 25 bucks. That's just about what it cost us to put a kid on a boat. So, if you kind of look at it that way, come down and buy a couple tickets and know that you just put two kids on their first ever fishing trip next year. Fantastic. Or this year. Mike Lum, Great Captain Rollins, Kids at Sea. We'll see you next Sunday at Day at the Docks. Thank you, guys. All right. Appreciate that. Phones are packed. They want to talk to Captain Ryan. Josh and Minifee, you're up next on Let's Talk Hookup. What's up, Josh? Welcome to the show. Good morning, guys. Great show so far. Oh, uh, Ryan, uh, I've been seeing a lot of pictures of some really nice wind cobs on your social media account. Now, my question is, do you actually target those when the yellow tails aren't showing up, or is it more of a bycatch when rock fishing? You know, typically in years past, the lingcod for us, they were just a bycatch. There there wasn't enough of them around for us to really target them. But as of late here, in the last couple of weeks, I don't know what happened, seasonal pattern, you know, they uh, maybe they're getting ready to spawn. I'm not sure what happened, but 
we're going to spots where we have never caught a lingcod before. And yesterday we went to a spot. I've never caught a lingcod there before. And we caught 26 legals and a whole bunch of short ones in one stop. So, you know, that's what I love about the ocean is that it's always changing. You know, it's the fishing that's happening right now is different than the fishing that was happening last year. And it's just an always changing environment. And that's what keeps me into it. And so, yeah, now we actually are starting to target them if we cannot find yellowtail. You know, Cameron is driving the boat today. He just sent me a message. He's still looking around for yellowtail. We're going to spend the first few hours of the trip looking for yellowtail if we can stay busy with yellowtail all day long that's what we'll do you know that's what people want but if we can't we will target bottom fish and especially those lingcod because they've been a lot of fun and they're, they're good ones we had an 18 and a half pounder yesterday oh we had like five others over 10 pounds they're wow they're nice big bottom fish and they pull hard <laughs> you know when you hook a lingcod right yeah that they're crowd pleasers my crew member matt brawla yesterday made the comment he's like this is like when a dorado comes over the rail i mean the people <laughs> are high-fiving cheering i mean the whole boat's giving the guy a round of applause who caught it it's, right. it's been really really fun yeah yeah it's a good one and fun fun what's the secret for fi- fishing for lingcod uh you know there's a lot of different ways to catch them we just been fishing a traditional dropper loop single hook dropper loop with either a sardine or a mackerel on it but I tell you, one of the ways which is very effective for them is taking a flat fall and putting a sardine on it. Or, really? Or two sardines. Yeah. I never would have thought it, it would happen. I looked at the guy with the sardine on his flat fall sideways the first time I saw it. But after he caught three lingcod in a row, Come he on. started. I'm not joking. It's, it, it sits right on the bottom. It's got a live sardine kicking around and... It works. It's okay. like kind of like uh, a hamburgesa rig, right? Yeah, right. Exactly. For a yeah, that shouldn't work either, but it yeah, you, but it does. Say what you want, man. It Not, works. Yeah. You know, nothing surprises me anymore. You know, last <laughs> last year or the year before, when we started fishing those bluefin foamers, I was on the PA telling the people, put down those poppers and surface irons, please fish a live bait. And we had the whole boat fishing live baits for bluefin, and we never got a bite. Oh! And, and by the end of the day, I had just kind of said, okay, fish whatever you want. You want to throw a popper? You want to throw a surface iron? Go for it. We ended up with 20 bluefin. <laughs> <laughs> All on poppers and yeah. surface yeah. irons. Unreal. Yeah. yeah, so nothing surprises yeah, me anymore. Never, no. You have to keep an open mind. Yeah, you know, for sure. No, nobody has it mastered. Hey, speaking of bluefins, I know, Ryan, you were just saying some, some great news as far as bluefin fishing locally here that yesterday. Yeah, you know, uh, my old crew member, Renee, is driving the Shogun. I think they're on a three-day. Is it a three-day? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think they're on a three-day. Yesterday was their first full-day fishing. They had 44 bluefin oh, right? from 25 to 35 pounds. So the smaller grade, smaller grade, yeah. but still a beautiful fish. I yeah. mean, a 30-pound oh, bluefin. Oh, my God. He had 44 of them, and the thing that's most impressive is the weather in which he did it in. He had bad weather. Yeah, not uh, ideal it, fishing conditions. Not ideal fishing conditions. So that is, uh, is setting up real. Very encouraging. Very encouraging. Renee is one heck of a fisherman. Very proud of him. Yeah, you know, he, he, he should be. Man. I he, fished with him at Guadalupe last year. It was awesome. Yeah, he came walking down the dock when he was about 17 years old from Redondo Beach wearing a punk rock T-shirt. And he <laughs> asked for a job on the San Diego, and we and we gave him a shot. And he is he's really grown up and is doing a great, Correct. great job. Good yeah. man. Hey, there you go. Thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. All right. With that, it's time to find out what's going on on the water. It's time for your fishdope.com report with a man, Captain Dave Hansen, your saltwater guide. Today, the catch board is sponsored by Gamakatsu Live Bait Hooks. They drive the point home. Gamakatsu features the absolute perfect bends and ideal barbs to allow your baits to swim harder and longer. And when they do fall victim to the intended predator, Gamakatsu Hooks bite back with a vengeance. All hooks are not the same. Go with Gamakatsu for infinite success. Let's talk to the man, Dave Hansen, your saltwater guide. What's up, Dave? Hey, good morning, Rick, Pete, Ryan. Good morning, Dave. Good morning. Hey, is Corey in there today? No, Corey's going to be here. Corey's going to be our new co-host like we announced yesterday right. when either Rick or I are gone or okay. both of us are gone. Corey gotcha. will be here. Yeah. So Dan the okay. Docks will be uh, ho- yep. hopefully our uh, our next, next Saturday and yeah. Sunday. Corey will be with Rick. That's we'll both be awesome. all right. I'll be in Panama. Awesome. Oh, that's too bad, Pete. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I do. We're all. Well, it's my job. I have right. to go, Dave. <laughs> Somebody has to go do the research, yeah, right? Right, buddy. Exactly. Field all right. Well, good morning. 
And like Ryan was just saying about the show again there, the weather has been a factor this week. That has a lot to do with what's been going on as far as exotic fishing goes, as far as the yellow fishing goes, as far as the bluefin fishing goes. The weather's been up. There's been a lot of wind this week, off and on. But other than that, guys, there's phenomenal rockfish fishing. There's really good calico bass fishing at Catalina and San Clemente Island if you get the right bait. There's really good bass fishing over there. The squid fishing at Catalina right now is really tough because, once again, we're talking about the red crabs. The red crabs are back. Are they never left or whatever you want to say? But there is a phenomenal amount of red crabs at Catalina. I was talking with Todd Manser yesterday. What he said, because, you know, Todd's so scientific, he says this is the last spawn of the red crabs. They usually last about three years. They, this was a five-year spawn of the red crabs. He believes because the water's so cold that this should be it. This should be the last spawn. So I'm going to go with what Todd says. But Pete Grosbeck told me you can throw all the history books away, just like Ryan just said, because none of this stuff makes sense to anybody. Nobody knows what's really going on out here. You just the only thing I can tell you, like I tell all my clients. The best thing to do is go fishing, and then it'll all be revealed when you get out there. You just have to go. You just have to go spend some time on the water. You got to go with Ryan. You got to go with Renee. You got to go with somebody and get out there on the water and go fishing because every single day is different, and nothing makes any sense to anybody. I mean, really. That's for sure. Well, hey, a sardine you know, on a flat ball? Come on. Yeah, yeah, man, come on. Don't knock it till you try it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Don't I'm, knock I'm, it till you I'm rock gonna it. try it. That's for sure. I guarantee you. Hey, uh, fishdope.com has all the secrets, all the hot tips from guys like Dave Hansen and Mark Wish and more out there. Twenty bucks off a new membership to fishdope.com. You can get all the information for an entire year. Fishdope.com using the code hookup now. And how do we find you, Dave? Well, guys, my new website's going ballistic. We got tons of new stuff to put up there. Kelly and I are going to be out filming today. We're going to be doing bait selection. We're going to be doing how to rig and how to fly the kite and the yummy. All that stuff will be up on the website in the next couple of weeks. So look me up at YourSaltWaterGuide.com or give me a call at 949-374-0786. We'll come with you on your boat and teach you how to do all this cool stuff that we're doing. We'll show you how to pin a sardine on a flat ball. Perfect. <laughs> All right, Captain Dave. We'll talk to you next Sunday. All right, guys. Good luck, Ryan. Have a good week. All right. Thanks, Dave. That. Thank you, Dave. Very much. All right, let's go ahead and jump back on those jam-packed phones. You got it. We got some very patient callers like our buddy Jim calling us from National City. What's up, Jim? Welcome to Let's Talk. Hookup. Is this the Jim from hey, National City? Dick. It's the Dick. Uh, national Dick. champion, Dick. Jim Malello. Yeah. What's up, Jim? Yeah. I got you, Skip. Hey, uh, yeah, I'm out here at Otai Lake up in Harvey's Arm on this beautiful rock pile. We got an ice chest full of primo crawdads. Been fishing a couple hours and have not got bumped. But mm-hmm. anyway, we're going to stick it out here. And uh, there's listening to the show. And, of course, my favorite boat is the San Diego. You know, I just uh, I love that boat. My buddy uh, Doug is the cook there. And uh, our motto is the other cook. And he is an excellent cook also. But that, and of course the crew is outstanding. But, uh, you know, what I kind of wanted to mention was, uh, here in San Diego, we're so lucky that, uh, you know, we have a couple of other boats, the Mission Bell and the Liberty, which, uh, Ryan will agree with me are also excellent boats. Great you know? boats, yeah. But my boat is the San Diegan and, uh, that's that's the boat I I, I go on and uh, I go on all of it. I, I try at least once or twice a year to go on the Mission Bell and the Liberty, you know, because I like those guys, Steve Peterson and Taro. But uh, but anyway, I just wanted to call and say hi. Always doing the great job, guys. And uh, you did all that boat work this year, Skip. And uh, man, I'll tell you, she's running real nice. Thank so you. So anyway, very much, that's Jim. all. Thanks, Jim. Good job, Jimbo. Yeah. So one of your regulars on the boat. Yep, one of our one of our regulars. Great guy. Used to block for O.J. Simpson at USC. How about yeah, that, he huh? Na- he has a he wore his national championship ring on the boat the other day. It's pretty cool. That's cool. Nice. Yeah. All right, Jim. Good luck. We hope you get him out there. Appreciate the call this morning. Ken Corwin's on the line from Ken's Custom Reel. What's up, Ken? Hey, Ken. 
Hey, morning, guys. How you doing? Hey, real quick, uh, a couple things. I know Dave was just on the phone. If anybody would like to come and see Dave's comedy act, he's going to be at the Oceanside Angler Club meeting on Tuesday night. So uh, if you're looking for entertainment Tuesday, come on over. And then we have our 21st annual halibut tournament on Saturday coming up on the 14th. So any of you guys out there that want to uh, go halibut fishing, maybe win a little bit of money, we got our tournament on Saturday. Uh, that, That's that, all. This, is this coming Saturday? Yeah. Right before Day at the Docks. Catch a halibut and go to Day at the Docks. There you go. How, do, how do you enter that halibut derby, Ken? Um, well, we have all the all the information in the tournament forms here at the shop, or you can go to um, the Oceanside Angles website and uh, download it from there, and it's real, real easy to get in. Perfect. Great tournament, great halibut tournament. Good luck with that, Ken, and thanks for uh, – for that, and uh, always nice to hear from our buddy Ken Corwin. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Thanks, Ken. Very much. Let's go ahead and jump back in the phones, Rick. Sounds good. How about this time we talk to Mike? He's calling us from Chino this morning. Mike, thanks for hanging in there with us. Good morning, Mike. Yo, Mike. Mike. Mike, are you with us? I always, always hate it when a guy hangs on hold for an hour yeah, and doesn't, <laughs> doesn't make it. So sorry, Mike, but hopefully you can get back through and join us again. And in the meantime. Hey, hey, hey I'm here. There, there he is. is. <laughs> oh, just in time. Yeah. Right at the bell. Buzzer beat. Sorry, guys. I had the had mute button on my phone. <laughs> ah, you know, Roger. All good, Mike. I guess I haven't had my coffee hit me this morning. Hey, yeah, uh, last year, I, Ryan, I had a privilege of fishing on your boat, and I had a really, really good time. We were catching bluefin tuna right off the pens, and even close to where you could catch calico bass. It was pretty epic. Yeah, we and, had uh, some of that last year. That was pretty rad. Uh, I had a really good time. I wanted to – you did an overhaul on your boat. I was going to see uh, – Ask. it's such a nice boat. I had a really good time. It's very well kept and everything. I'll see what – kind of improvements you got you did this uh, off season to it well this past winter uh we did kind of structural stuff you know we have to we kind of flip-flop each winter between uh cosmetics and structural improvements and, and this past winter was uh refastening a lot of the bottom of the boat the the type of boat that i have the san diego it's a ditmar donaldson and it's yeah. wood planks over frames and they're screwed the planks are screwed to the frames with uh, three-inch silicon bronze screws, or I take that back. The boat was built with galvanized screws. Wow. And, and, yeah, and over time, those fasteners that hold the, the bottom of the boat on <laughs> will, will, will go away over time. You know, they'll corrode and go away. So we're constantly refastening. We're pulling out screws. So you're putting new silicon bronze new, in there? New silicon bronze screws. So we did a lot of that this past winter. We spent a lot of money in our engine room. We spent, you know, thirty-five thousand dollars in just kind of having the diesel mechanic freshen up the engines. You know that if if a passenger stepped on the boat today, he probably wouldn't see much difference in the boat from last year cosmetically. You know, we didn't do any any painting or any, or any stuff like that. But I can tell you, the boat is safer. The boat is more structural sound than it's ever been. Is you know those boats get abused out there. Oh, yeah. Our engines. Uh, get turned on March 1st, and they typically don't shut off until Christmas. So wow. we need to make sure that they are in, in ideal working condition. And some of the weather that we're in, when you're pounding up the line coming home and you're taking and taking spray over the wheelhouse, you want to make sure your boat's not going to fall apart. Yeah, so it's a good thing. That, that's where we put most of our money. Is How many this... hours do you put on the San Diego a year? Oh, geez. I, I, I don't know exactly. I, I could figure it out, but it's... You know, it's thousands, two, 280 to 320 days a year. And that's, you know, that's five in the morning till seven at night. Yeah. So yes. you can figure that it's a, it's a lot of hours. hours. Yeah, it's for sure. a lot. So we need to make sure that, that we can make it through the season without any uh any hiccups yeah no doubt about it All hey right. thanks a lot for the call this morning hey when we come back we got a lot more let's talk hookup coming your way including more your phone calls and more great information with captain ryan boston you stay tuned it's let's talk hookup on the mighty 1090 for local and long-range fishing the islander out of fisherman's landing is a favorite among seasoned or novice anglers but islander charters is much more than great fishing they also do incredible guadalupe white shark diving trips as well as a schedule of kayak mothership trips you need to check out the Islander on their website, islander-charters.com. 
the Islanders, San Diego's Lear, when it comes to two to five day fishing. Watch the website for trips and adventures available. Experience the Islander difference. Visit islander-charters.com for all the details. Here's John Ireland for Rancho Llanero. You know, the ranch is unique. It's one of the few places in the world where you can still drive ATVs up the beach. We have fishing from the beach. We have dive trips that we run to Pomo in a number of different spots. Kayaking, of course, has been real big. We were one of the first hotels to introduce kayaking. The ranch is small, you know, it's intimate, it's 34 rooms, so everyone gets to know everyone. The old saying, where everyone knows your name. Well, truly at Ranch Llanero, the employees do know pretty darn near all our guests' names. And what's even more interesting is most of the guests know each other's names. Very personal, very intimate, and a special, special environment. Two miles of beachfront, a mile on either side of the hotel. Rancho Llanero is really the last of the old-style Baja fishing resorts. 1-800-646-2252. 1-800-646-Baja. And RanchoLanero.com. I'll personally guarantee your best fishing experience and vacation at Rancho Llanero. Hey, everybody, this is Captain Dwayne Diego, four-pack charter captain, here to talk to you about Parker Boats and the good folks at West Coast Marine. When it came time to start Pinnacle Sport Fishing and get my own boat, there was only one choice. I wanted a Parker, and there's a real good reason for it, the fishability and seaworthiness. I've been fishing on Parkers for years now, and I know the abuse they can take. Parker Marine builds a heavy-duty, industrial-strength boat, probably overbuilt, but that's what I need when we're out 12 hours a day, over 300 days a year, running charters. The guys at West Coast Marine built me one heck of a fishing boat. From the custom tower with steering and throttle controls to the backup bait pump system, my Parker 2520 XLD will deliver me to the fishing grounds reliably and safe. Take it from me. If you're ready for a new Parker at a fair, upfront, honest deal, you need to see Kevin Kelly at West Coast Marine, located at 1555 Newport Boulevard in Costa Mesa, or check them out and their inventory and information online at westcoastmarine.com. Turner's Outdoorsman, Southern California's number one shooting, hunting, and fishing tackle retailer since 1971 is right in your neighborhood. Now 19 stores and more to come throughout Southern California. No one does it better. Turner's Outdoorsman brings you the best prices and selection, plus a knowledgeable staff that will help make your day on the water or in the field more fun. Stop by your neighborhood Turner's Outdoorsman. To find a location nearest you, check the web at turners.com and sign up for special deals and more. It's time to get excited about fishing, and Point Loma Sport Fishing has everything you'll need. They offer half-day and three-quarter day trips daily, perfect for families and the novice or seasoned fishermen. Point Loma Sport Fishing also offers overnight to multi-day trips, targeting the best of seasonal catches. Visit their website at pointlomasportfishing.com where you can purchase tickets online and get more information on the trips available. Or call 619-223-1627. San Diego's sports leader, the home of ESPN Radio, the mighty 1090. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up on the mighty 1090. Indeed, having a great time here talking to Captain Ryan Bastian from the San Diego, talking fishing here. Big link car, man, that sounds like fun. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yellowtail's cool, but... I, I love catching link cod. It's it's nice and and different for us, you know. I know the guys up north, Sean Stewart and all those guys up there, they they catch a lot of link cod, yeah. but you know we certainly don't. So it, it's been a nice change of pace for us. We're into it. Seeing yeah, that fun. picture that you posted yesterday with Fisher holding that, what, however big that thing was, I mean, it looked like you were in Alaska, you know, with a big giant gut, like, hanging over both hands and the tails hanging over one side. Like, yeah. that's a giant one. That We put that one on the scale. That one was 18 and a half pounds, and we pulled a copper rockfish, a chucklehead, out of its stomach, and we also put that thing on the <laughs> scale. It was a three-pound chucklehead. No oh, way. In wow. Stomach, no way. Yeah, How was, cool is that? It was a three-pound copper rockfish in the Lincoln stomach. In the stomach. Lincoln stomach. Mostly digested, too. So it was bigger than three pounds when he ate it. Wow. <laughs> Those things have a huge dorsal yeah. spine oh, on them. Yeah. I, I, I can't Ow, think of yeah. a I can't think of a fish that looks less desirable to eat <laughs> yeah. than, a, than a whole yeah. chucklehead. Yeah. Those yeah. things are crazy. Those are yeah. crazy fish. And how do you? Get, I mean, they got to eat it the right way. That's for sure. Yeah. Right? Head first. Yeah, they don't eat yeah. anything. <laughs> Indeed. Hey, let's go ahead and jump into the phones. Sounds good. How about we talk to Rich, who's called us from Bradley this morning? Hi, Rich. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Good morning, Rich. Good morning. Uh, when you first opened up the show today, one of the things you were talking about was the. Uh, the need for a password just to go to the Coronados. And, you know, if you're thinking about, well, I don't want to get a password just for a fishing trip, 
there's a lot of extra value to it now because uh, the new regulations from California about what it takes to for presenting for presenting an ID just to get a driver's license. So consequently, some of the federal installations are not accepting the California driver's license anymore. And I had to do some work on uh, Fort Hunter Liggett, and the, the passport uh, kind of helped ease things through. So Good and that's just a little side note of the value of a of a passport. No doubt. And uh, another thing that uh, really caught my eye when I was listening to the beginning of the show this morning was how you. You spared no expenses on uh, being on the cutting edge of the electronics and the advantage that it's given you and how it's, it's really been a game changer. And with that in mind, I'm wondering, um, well, you just discussed it, how you're spending tons of money just on structure. Um, what's it going to be like, do you think, down the road for uh, the fleet and maybe your boat having something like the Sea Keeper? Yeah, you know, I, I've thought about that a lot in the last couple of years and, and I don't think we could put one on the San Diego because we're made out of wood and I don't know how much stress that that puts on a hull I would imagine a lot yeah but there's some boats in our fleet that I think would be ideal for it oh, you yeah. know I I won't mention any names but there's there's some metal boats in our fleet that quite honestly don't ride that nice you know they're top heavy and and I think would be uh, a perfect candidate for a sea keeper. Yeah. I yeah. think it, the future is bright on sea. The sea keeper is amazing, and I have one on my boat. It's just unbelievable. But like Ryan says, my boat is a solid glass hull. Right. Um, and they can't put it on something like that's a laminated hull mm -hmm. or a planked hull or something like that because of the stresses that it that it might create to that hull. But a solid metal hull, yeah, uh, or a solid fiberglass hull. It'll work just fine. But the technology is developing daily on that. That's so good news. you watch, things are going to happen. And if you want to try Seakeeper, their next, your next opportunity to try that uh, is, of course, uh, the Seakeeper uh, Demo Days is going to be at the Newport Boat Show, uh, the 19th to the 22nd. And then uh, uh, and then also the thir next weekend, I, I forgot about this, the 13th to the 15th, the Seakeeper Demo Boat will be at Big Bay Yachts. Uh, it's a three-day event at Big Bay Yachts, and uh, that's going to be happening next weekend. And awesome. Sunday happens to be Day at the Docks. So if you're at Day at the Docks, you can walk down to Big Bay Yachts, which is just down past Point Loma Seafoods, and go jump on the Seakeeper and take a ride BMA. So next weekend at Big Bay Yachts, and then April 19th at Newport Boat Show. Check out the Seakeeper demo boat down there. It's going to be a good time. Hey, thanks a lot for the call, Rich, and good information on the passport. All right, next up, let's talk to John. He's calling from Huntington Beach this morning. Hey, John, welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, great show, as always. Um, I took my son on the San Diego like 20 years ago. He was uh, about eight years old, and you guys just took amazing care of him, and, and he ended up splitting the jackpot with another young kid. So it was really a great experience, and he, he loves to fish still. So <laughs> you, you guys are doing something right there. Oh, thank you, uh, my question is, how, how do you uh, uh, treat the kids nowadays when they come on, uh, like with a parent or a guardian or something? And, and, you know, is there any special treatment that you guys give them, or how, how do you guys take care of them now? Yeah, you know, the kids always get special treatment. We had an 8-year-old on the boat yesterday named Keegan that he caught, I think, five of our big bonito. He, oh, he, wow. Yeah. Wow. He's going to throw for him. Oh, man. He had a great time. He had a big ling cod. We put a picture of him up on our Instagram account. He, he had a great time. The kids always get special attention from the crew. You know, that's a, I was sitting with a passenger yesterday on the rail, and he was not related to Keegan at all, just another passenger, and he was telling me, he said, that this trip is totally worth it just because that kid had a good time. He, That's cool. Uh, he told me he would rather see him catch fish than himself catch fish. Yeah. So everyone kind of rallies around the kids. You know, we all know that yeah. that's what it's about is getting those kids hooked on fishing and showing them a good time. That's cool. Ultimately, that's what it is. You know, it's a it's a outdoor excursion. You know, we want to... We want to see these kids have a good time and spend time in the outdoors and put down their iPads. No doubt about it. Yeah. Hey, thanks a lot for the call this morning. Here's a guy that caught a fish or two now and then, John Collins. Oh, Good morning, the man. John. John. Hey, Ricky, 
Ryan, how are you guys doing this morning? Doing Very great, well. Buddy. Morning, John. You out there catching big fish today? Uh, I'm in my garage calling you on the <laughs> on the show here, listening to it. That's fantastic. <laughs> I'm dreaming. I'm looking at my tackle, wishing it was in the water versus on the garage floor, but whatever. <laughs> 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 That's the way it is. Hey, I just I just wanted to call in. Uh, number one, I'd like to thank Ryan very much for his generous donations to the trips that I have on the Independence and the Royal Polaris. He's been very very generous in his donations. Last year on the uh, on the Independence 10 day in December, I filled in for as an AFCO rep on a 10 day trip, and we ran a Frenzarello raffle on the boat, and it generated twenty eight hundred dollars. So wow. That worked out good. I plan on doing the same thing. I have a trip on the Independence an eight day in June, up my Royal Polaris over the fourth of July, and then another eight day trip in August. And I think I'm going to wind up filling in for AFCO again on the December ten day trip. Wow. My plans are, uh-huh. yeah, my plans are to generate or hopefully get as much product as we can and run the friends or all the raffles on those tickets, provided we get enough stuff. Uh, I anticipate on those between those four trips generating about ten thousand dollars for friends or all of them. Wow, fantastic! That is great. Yeah, and you do such a good job for friends or all Captain Rallo's kids at sea, and uh, you've always been a great helper and supporter on that. So very good, John. Good work on it. Yeah, and I just wanted to thank uh, Ryan again. Uh, he and Taro on the Liberty have been very generous in donating trips on their boat. And they've been uh, well received as far as our raffle goes. Thank you very for, much, John. Anytime, and come for back Ron, and get some yeah. more. <laughs> yeah, well, you can you can count on that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, John. Appreciate the call this morning. One, just one other thing, if I can, uh, Ryan, give me a call when you get a chance. I've got some wahoo for you and your lady. Oh, nice. Hi. Uh, John is our wahoo connection. Nice. <laughs> That's a good Very connection nice. to have. Yeah. Very good. Hey, Thank John. You, John. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. Oh, one of the great guys in the biz for sure. And also, while John's saying that, we want to thank you for all the generous donations Absolutely. you give to us on Let's Talk Hookup, whether it be on the show here or our live remotes. Uh, you're very generous with passes on the San Diego, and we very much appreciate it. Yeah, that. no, no problem. Trip and I, in for sure. I know our listeners appreciate it, too, <laughs> for sure. Let's go ahead and jump back on the phones. You got it. How about this time we talked to Kenny, who's calling us from Hawaiian Gardens this morning. Good morning, Kenny. Thanks for hanging in there with us. Hey, morning, guys. Hey, Rick, I have a question for you, a uh, tackle question. All right. I have a Terramar 711, 1530, heavy power, extra fast. It's got a Torium HG16. Um, I got this rod and reel combo here from a friend. Um, it's got 80 pound yellow power pro, about three quarters of the way full. The rest of the rail is empty. Uh, what exactly is that rod and reel designed for? And should I put like, uh, is that 82 heavy or should I go down and put mono in there with a little piece of floor on the end or how should I do that? Is the Terramar that you have a, um, a cork handle with a trigger seat on it or is it just like the standard X shrink um, butt to it? No, it has a real seat on it with the trigger and stuff. So not not to say that that rod is mismatched by any means, but that that is like a, a heavy version of a bass rod. You know, it's like a heavy a heavy bass rod and be good for shallow water rock fishing and calico bass and you know and small you know up to like kelp patty size yellowtails and things like that. If you were wanting to keep that same rod and reel um, together, probably the 80 pound is a little larger than what would be ideal for. Um, just because you're not going to get a ton of capacity out of 80 pound and a torium 16. So um, you could fish the rod and reel just the way that it is and then just put like a 25 pound top shot and just use that as your, you know, as long as there's enough room, a nice long 25 um, pound bait rod, and that will allow you to make your cast in mono, fish your bait in mono. Having straight spectra right to the hook isn't always necessarily the the best situation in the world. The, the bait doesn't, um, you know, when you're fishing amongst other people, if you're going fishing on a boat like the San Diego, straight specter right to the hook is, is great in the way that the bait swims, but when you're fishing with 25 other guys and have potential tangles to deal with and, 
Um, your bait swimming amongst 25 other baits in the water. Sometimes a nice long top shot of 25 pound will help get you out of more trouble than it will save you from, you know, from getting bites from. Ryan, when uh, people are fishing short top shots versus long top shots, what do you see on the San Diego? You, you know, we recommend that people use at least a, a boat length of top shot. You know, like Rick mentioned, a short top shot certainly has its advantages in getting bites. But, you know, we're, you're not standing on a skiff with one other person right, fishing. Right. You know, you're you're on a boat with 20 to 40 other people, and we we don't really like the short top shots. What we like to do on the San Diego is take our reels, fill them halfway with Spectra, and then fill the other half with mono, whatever, whatever size mono you think uh, you want to use. And then to the mono, we attach a short little three-foot section of fluorocarbon for the invisibility factor, and we get bit extremely well just like that. And the manageability of having the top half of your reel filled with mono is a huge advantage. Indeed. Hey, yeah. thanks a lot for the call this morning. Good suggestions there. Let's go ahead and jump back in the phones, Rick. You got it, man. How about this time we talk to John. John's calling us from San Diego. Hi, John. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Good morning, John. Good morning, guys. Uh Captain Ryan, I was hoping you could uh, talk about some strategies you use at the island to uh, minimize the effects of the seals and sea lions. Yeah, that's that's definitely a big, <laughs> a big part of our program down there. And, you know, the, the way I look at it is when, when there's a true biomass of yellowtail around the Coronado Islands, like when there's a lot of fish there and we're going to put up fish counts, you know, in the hundreds consistently – the, the seals get their share, and we also get our share. So it's just they're just part of the program now. We we try to keep them on the run as much as possible. Um, we do a lot of drift fishing. We do a, a lot of – if you've been on any of these three-quarter day boats in the last 10 years, we all, you know, myself, Steve on the Mission Bell, Taro on the Liberty, we all kind of fish that place like an offshore style, really. We're driving around, following ridges looking for open water schools, throwing some chum on them, and getting quick drifts on them. And, and if you get a school of yellowtail fired up, you can put 30, 40, 50, 100 of them on the boat in, in 15 minutes. Yeah. And in that time, you know, it's been, it's been two miles since your last stop, and the sea lions are still chasing you. By the time the sea lions get there, they're too late. Yeah. You know, we've already caught our fish. So. That's one of the tactics we use is, is, you know, Cameron sent me a message last week, said he was seeing good schools of yellow. Cameron is the relief captain of the San Diego. He sent me a message last week saying, I'm seeing good schools of yellowtail, but the sea lions are killing us. We can't, we can't catch them. And I sent him a message back saying, hey, just, you know, keep them on the run. They've been running out of gas by the afternoon because they get tired yeah, of, of, chasing, chasing, you of chasing you around. And, and and that's what happened, you know, come one, two, three, yeah, especially when the current's smoking like yeah. it was. They get swimming in that current all day. Eventually, they'll just, you know, they'll they'll back off they a little bit. A little they'll bit. give up, yeah, and then you can start getting fish through them, and that's exactly what happened. You yeah. know, by the afternoon, they started giving them time to land fish, and where the sea lions really, really hurt us is when we're sitting on the anchor and we're just picking that fish. If we just have one going... They'll eat them all. But, you know, what happens a lot is we'll be sitting on the anchor. If we can hook three, four, five at a time, the seal will get one. We'll get the other four. Okay. And then the yellowtail come back through. They'll get one. We get the other four. It's yeah. just kind of, you know, I, I mentally, for me, I can't fight them any longer. They're just back to life. <laughs> for, yeah, for, for my own sanity, that I have to just ignore them. Yeah, really. You just have to play their game. It's the way it is. Yeah, it's, they're part sure. of the part of the deal. Yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. You know, you talked about when the yellowtail really get happening at the Coronado Islands. What do you? What conditions do you see that occurring in? Yeah. So, in other words, when are we going to see these big volumes of yellowtail that we traditionally see in the spring in in in, in yeah. The islands? Yeah, it it could happen. Any time, mm -hmm. for sure. But what what I've noticed with yellowtail in the 20 plus years that I've been fishing the Coronado Islands now, it they like stable conditions. They 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 can handle cold water. We've caught them really good in 58 degree water if it's been 58 for three weeks and it's stable. What really kind of uh, uh, sets them off, I've noticed, 
is unstable conditions. Water temperature jumping up and down four or five degrees all the time. Weather going back and forth from from not so nice to nice. You know, when it gets stable, stable water temp, stable weather, that's when I expect we'll see them. And that's when you had that good fishing, right? We had a stable condition for about a week, right? Yes. And and you know, like yesterday, you said the current was running downhill, the current was running uphill. It's that's not stable, that's right? That's not stable. That is, yeah. That that's what happened this week. You know, the beginning part of the week. The current was smoking to the north, you know, three, four, five days in a row, and just yesterday it switched again. Now it's going to the south, so which is more preferable. More, yeah, it's it's better for sure to be going, you know, south southeast current is ideal, and it's just a transition time of year, just like the fall. Yeah. It's and things are setting up. They're still around. We're seeing enough signal right now where we get some stable weather, we get some stable water. It's going to happen. Yeah. 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 Very shortly, any time here. You know, I want to remind you, too, if you want to go fishing on Friday, day and a half trip on the American Angler, 400 bucks for a day and a half trip on the American Angler. leaves Friday at 5 p.m. You better jump on it, AmericanAnglerSportFishing.com. Uh, we talked about the trip earlier in the show, but uh, definitely one you want to jump on this coming week, AmericanAnglerSportFishing.com. Day and a half departing Friday and fishing. Saturday, you're back Sunday morning, hopefully with a bag full of bluefin. Her, especially here in that success that Renee's already had, you know, 44 yeah. bluefins yesterday, nice yeah. great fish. I mean, what a cool in opportunity. Weather. Yeah, what a cool opportunity yeah. to jump on such, I mean, is there a more comfortable platform to yeah. get to go fishing Better bluefin crew, than the American Angler? Yeah, yeah, all the way awesome. around. Yeah, for sure. And also want to remind you, too, be sure to check out our website, Hook Up. 1090.com or let's talk hookup.com either one will work uh check out all the different things we have on there a lot of new stories and photos and such like that and of course our new app go to the app store or the droid st- or the android uh, play store and download our new app you'll love it no doubt all right hey when we come back we're gonna find out what lucky two callers are going fishing aboard the san diego you stay tuned more let's talk hookup coming your way on the mighty 1090 Pete here to tell you about our friends Jim and Mary and their incredible crew at Poway Valley Collision. I hear it all the time. Hey, I took my car to Poway Valley Collision, and you were right. Mentioned you guys, and they gave us the VIP treatment, fixed our car, and even gave us a special price. Believe me when I say Poway Valley Collision is worth the drive from anywhere in the Southland. We know you may not need them now, but when accidents happen, it pays to go to Poway Valley Collision. And I'm not fooling. Our listeners can save hundreds of dollars on your car or truck repair. They work with most insurance companies, including Auto Club, MetLife, and Wawanisa, and more. All you do is call Jim, Mary, or any of their team members, and they do all the rest. No hassles, just top-notch work and VIP treatment. I had my car repaired at Poway Valley Collision, and the job was perfect. So get your vehicle fixed right at Poway Valley Collision. 14211 Garden Road in Poway. Check PowayValleyCollision.com. Are you feeling that itch to get out on the water? Come fishing on the American Angler and reacquaint yourself with some familiar faces and make new friends. Captain owners Brian Kiyohara and Sam Patella take pride in every aspect of the American Angler operation, from their loyal and trusted crew to the sashimi-grade fresh fish you'll take home. It's easy to find a vacation that fits your schedule. We have everything from day and a half to 10-day trips and longer. Call me at the office, 619-223-5414, or check us out at AmericanAnglerSportFishing.com. We want you to become a part of the American Angler family. Great boats, free parking, and a fully stocked tackle shop. Just a few of the reasons Seaforth Sport Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top charter boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Eclipse, Apollo, Outer Limits, Pacific Star, El Gato Dos, Alexis, Pride, Privateer, Tribute, Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new Seaforth Sea Watch in San Diego offer the finest half, three-quarter, and full-day trips available. Check out the full-service tackle store at Seaforth Sport Fishing. And it's all run by fishermen for fishermen. 1717 Quivera Road just off Mission Bay Drive in Mission Bay. Book online at seaforthlanding.com. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, CalSTAR. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the CalSTAR West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend CalStar at fine tackle stores everywhere. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. Right, big winners, two, two.
two lucky callers going fishing aboard the San Diego on full day trips out of Sea Force Sport Fishing. A big congratulations to Paul in Temecula and Jim in National City. You guys are both getting to go fishing with Captain Ryan Boston. All right, fantastic operation. San Diego out of Sea Force Sport Fishing. Somebody wants to ride the boat. How do we do it? Yeah, the easiest way to do it is call Seaforth Sport Fishing at 619-224-3383, or you can book online, seaforthlanding.com, or you can book through the boats website, which is www.thesandiego.com. Fantastic. There's three different ways to book there, but probably the easiest is call the landing, talk to the guys. They can get you set up on what tackle you need to bring. True professionals down there. They'll yeah, get you all set up. For sure. And they'll tell you what you need to bring. Uh, passports are required right now because you're fishing the Coronado Islands, but that could change. That could change. The second we go offshore in search of tuna or offshore yellowtail or bluefin, the passport requirement will go away. Yeah, Just go right. get a passport. Then you don't need to worry about it. Yeah, exactly. there you go. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks, Ryan. Look forward to uh, talking to you from the boat. Yes, I'll be Big calling yellowtail in. yellowtail fishing coming. It's coming. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, Ryan. All right. Hey, next Saturday and Sunday, I'll be... Heading for Panama, Pesca Panama trip with Cast Tours, but Rock Cod Rick and Corey Sandin will be in the Mighty 1090 studios next Saturday with the one and only legendary Captain Jim Hughes from the Cortez. That's going to be great. Another guy from C4 Sport Fishing there. And then next Sunday, it'll be live at Day at the Docks with Rick and Corey right there at Day at the Docks with a variety show. Yeah. Should be fun. We'll have our Let's Talk Hookup booth there. Uh, Gary and Tommy are going to cover for me on that. And a great live show, 7 and 9 a.m. next Sunday from Day at the Docks. Thanks for listening today. Thanks to Adam on the other side of the glass for all he does. And we'll see you next week right back here on the Mighty 1090.